Hey guys, welcome back. So this is going to be a comparison video between our last video where we built the door precision. Uh, if you haven't seen it and you want to check it out, I'll pop it up in the top corner. Uh, and we're going to compare cores versus clock. So our test bench is a four core, four gigahertz uh, CPU machine, and the door precision was a 2.4 gigahertz, 24 core machine. Uh, hopefully this will help uh, you decide on which one uh, is better for you. Obviously, if you're shooting and uh, encoding a shorter style of films, then yes, probably the four core is, Better suited but um uh, if you're shooting anything over 30 minutes i feel or 15 to 30 minutes or two hours i feel the 24 core might be better one thing you don't want to sacrifice though and one thing that i did look at when we we're testing was uh sacrificing playback between the clock speeds uh one thing to have a super fast encoding but I, I feel playback through editing and grading is super important uh so that's something that we did focus on in the graphs and uh i feel most people are going to encode overnight so they're probably going to set and forget sort of thing so you know before they go to bed set the encode wake up in the morning and it's done but uh in regards to the testing we tested uh a short and long um the same gpu in both machines uh to give an even uh sort of acceleration in the gpu side and solely focused on on the cpu sort of side of things so what we'll do now is run through some specs uh and then we'll run through the graphs Okay, so comparing the machines now, the dual precision to T7810, uh, two E5 2673V3 processors, 2.4 gigahertz, 24 core, 48 thread machine, uh, 96 gig of DDR4, 2133 megahertz RAM, uh, and for a hard drive, it's using an SM961 256 gigabyte. Um, the test bench, it's custom built, it's a 6700K, it's a 4 gigahertz, 4 core, 8 thread machine, it's running 32 gig of DDR4. 2133 megahertz RAM uh, using the same boot drive, the SM961 at 256 gigabyte, and both of them are running a GDX 1080 8 gigabyte. Okay, so jumping onto some uh, Geekbench tests, uh, we ran Geekbench 3, single core, we had the 6700 uh, do 4400, and the Dell Precision do a 2700 roughly. Uh, then onto the multi-core stuff, uh, here we had the Dual Precision doing 45,600 and then the 6700 doing 17,500, so more than double there. Uh, Geekbench 4, which is new, um, we had the single core performance of the test bench at 5,100 and the Dell Precision down to 2,854. Uh, multi-core, uh, we saw a different sort of uh, percentage here where we had the uh, door precision do a 24,400 and then the test bench do the 17,000 mark. So we really saw with Geekbench 4 that that gap between the multi-core come down um, and we'll see if it's relative or not uh, in the next couple pages. Uh, Cinebench R15, uh, here we ran the tests with uh, the single core, the multi-core and the OpenGL. Uh, the single core, obviously, we had the 6700 at uh, 180 and the dual precision at uh, 115. Uh, Multi-core, we had the dual precision at 3050 and the 6700 at 900. This is interesting, we're in the OpenGL test. One thing to note is uh, OpenGL is directly tied to single core performance and this is why, uh, even though both machines had a GTX 1080, we saw the dual, dual precision lag here at 94 frames and the test bench do it at 155 frames. Okay, so now onto some real world stuff. Uh, I have Cinema 4D, I have a 500 frame file. We rendered it out in a move uh, MOV file. Uh, here we saw the Dell do it in 21 minutes and the 6700 do it in an hour and 14 minutes. Uh, Photoshop, so we've got a 20 megapixel image and we run a whole bunch of um, OpenCL actions uh, directly tied to Photoshop. Uh, here we saw the 6700K edge out by about 13 seconds and that's once again due to its single core performance could probably feed the data faster. So now uh, these are the interesting stuff. This is where we tested the playback in DaVinci. Uh, so we had ProRes LT 4K footage in a 4K timeline, 25 frames per second, uh, no worries. Uh, then we took a 6K Dragon file, uh, ran a full premium Debea, and we got 21 frames per second from both machines. Uh, once again, same footage, but then the Debea set at half good, and we achieved a full frame rate of 25 frames per second. Um, then just 
I really wanted to see the difference uh, with the blue nodes and the CPU performance, but uh, both machines achieve the same amount um, there with a the GTX 1080, which just goes to show it's a full GPU uh, based testing. Um, and that's a 60 blue nodes, 17 frames per second, and 14 R nodes was at 18 frames per second. So basically we took uh, Premiere Pro, we have a 6K Red Dragon, um, basic, uh, very basic color correction and export it to H.264. Uh, we saw the Dell do it in 36 minutes and 7 seconds and the test bench do it in 44 minutes and 15 seconds so not too far off each other so now this is a real interesting one uh, same file same footage but in DaVinci Resolve exporting to H.264 um, uh, and we saw this do it in 2 hours and 55 minutes on the Dell and 4 hours and 45 minutes on the test bench the CPU usage was at 6% uh, and dropping to 3% at times in DaVinci, where else on Premiere we had the CPU usage up at 40%. So uh, that's a very bad result for DaVinci there. Um, moving on, took the same footage, exporting it into D exporting it out at DNXR HQ. We had uh, Premiere and the Dell do it at 16 minutes and 40 seconds, and the test bench do it at 29 minutes and five seconds. So close to double the performance there from the Dell. Uh, DaVinci Resolve, same sort of scenario uh, the Dell done it in 11 minutes and 22 seconds where else the 6700 done it in 24 and 40 minutes so um, resolve is definitely faster at exporting those codecs over the H.264 um, and then we took media encoder and we wanted to see how fast media encoder could turn that DNX uh, footage to the H.264 and then we saw the Dell do it in 35 and 30 seconds and then the test bench do it in 40 minutes and 10 seconds so one thing to note if you're running Resolve you're uh, you're much you're better off uh, exporting into a DNXR HQ and then uh, using an encoder to take that to H.264 um, both uh, so between Premiere, DaVinci, and Media Encoder, with that we saw CPU usage from um, probably about the 50 up to the 70 mark. Okay, so now the last three are probably why you would want the four core over the 24 core. So we have Premiere Pro 4K red footage, uh, export a two minute file to H.264, and the test bench done it in three minutes and 42, where else the Dell Precision done it in four minutes and 50. Uh, Premiere Pro again, we have a 6K, the same 6K footage that we used in the above test, but we're exporting a three minute file now, DNX HR, and we got the Dell at three minutes and 54 seconds, where else the test bench done in three minutes and 24 seconds. So once again, same thing as before, but exported to H.264, and we had the test bench do it in four minutes and 40, and the Dell Precision do it in five minutes and 12 seconds. So. Uh, you know what I said at the beginning of the video if you're working with short files definitely test bench uh, configuration suits you okay the conclusion so uh, cause was clock you be the judge uh, hopefully this helped you guys uh, make that decision uh, my opinion I guess uh, I would go for the higher core count uh, there was no playback performance loss which was something that was really important in my opinion uh, and uh, the the speed of encoding is really good one thing to take very large note of is resolve and h264 uh, very poor uh, very poorly coded uh, on the windows platform the interesting thing is on the os x platform i just it's something that i tested in a four core mac pro uh, the four core new mac pro actually beat both these machines uh, in that test in H.264. So it's definitely a Windows issue uh, and I feel Resolve needs to resolve that, pun intended. But uh, thanks for watching.